cool. Hey guys, it's Devin here with Make Anything. And today I thought I would share my uh, process making this little 3D printed trophy design for a recent uh, My Mini Factory competition. So you guys have probably heard me talk about My Mini Factory on this channel. I use their website to host all my 3D printing files. They let me give those files away for free and still earn some money through their studios program, which I can certainly appreciate. And uh, on top of that though, they also have competitions where you can submit designs and you can win 3D printers or even cash prizes, which is pretty cool. I don't enter too many of them because I'm busy making videos for this channel, but I did enter this 3D printing industry trophy design competition just recently because I thought it was pretty cool. For one thing, I could potentially have my trophy being used as an award. And uh, the other thing is they're working with Proto Labs, which is a, a prototyping company that has very fancy 3D printers that can do very intricate things. So I thought it would be fun to make a VR modeled trophy so that I can get really crazy. This was my attempt at printing it on my uh, SLA Moai machine, and it actually came out really well. There's a few areas that didn't quite print out, but overall, you get a good gist of the craziness that is this trophy. And uh, yeah, I think it came out looking really cool. I think the process was really fun. So that's what I'm gonna share with you today. Let's go ahead and see what I did. I started out with a pen and paper just sketching out some general ideas of what the trophy might look like. But I really wanted the medium to dictate what the design ended up being, so I jumped into VR pretty quickly and just started designing and kind of taking advantage of the fact that you can just draw things out and be pretty free with it. It's almost like sketching, but in 3D. So I started out with some really cool ribbons winding their way upwards. After all, this is a trophy. It's a cause for celebration, so ribbons work out. And I really just wanted to have a lot of energy in this drawing. So I followed that up with some of these kind of watery droplets, as I like to think of them. And these are pretty much the same shape that I used for my alien garden that I sculpted in VR just a couple weeks ago. I think it's a really fun shape and it's very expressive and emotional. So I went ahead and just started sprinkling those throughout and if you look at it, it's kind of like arranging a, a bouquet of flowers or something where you kind of draw out strokes and you can modify them and fine tune them. And I'm really just trying to find a, an arrangement that looks good from a lot of different angles. So I'll follow that up with these kind of uh, square blocks that are shooting out. At first they were gonna be kind of like grass or something, but I ended up building them up bigger and bigger to make it more exciting and more energetic so it ended up being this kind of blast of energy coming up from all around this uh, sculpture. I really like the amount of energy that I was able to capture in this. That's kind of my favorite thing. Here I was playing around with the base and trying to figure out where the text or the plaque would be for the trophy. But then I thought maybe I could actually take this uh, panel and nestle it within all the action. And it actually looks pretty cool just sitting right here in between the ribbons. So I kind of adjusted that until it really fit into place and decided to go with that for this trophy. All right, so I did a lot of little tweaks and stuff here and there that I didn't show. This actually ended up taking a couple hours, but once I was happy with it, the next step is to take one layer at a time and export it as an OBJ file. So by separating each of these as a separate layer, I'm able to work on them further individually before I combine it all into one single trophy. So we'll go ahead and export all of those. And then we're gonna bring it into Microsoft 3D Builder. And at first I'm bringing it into here just to figure out the size and to rotate it correctly and make it stand up. And then I'm gonna clean it up a bit, trimming off the bottom here. And then I'll also use that trim tool to separate this plaque from the block. They were on the same layer, so I can just separate them like that. And that'll allow me to uh, have a little more freedom again with how I uh, design all these different parts. So there we go, we still have everything separate. And to maintain that separation, I'm basically gonna save this out the same way I did in Gravity Sketch, cutting away all of the parts except for one at a time, and then individually saving each of those as an STL file. 
With that, I can bring all these parts into Mesh Mixer and keep working on it. So for some parts like this, I'm just gonna re-mesh it so that the polygons aren't so regular. They look a little more natural and organic. But more importantly, it gives me access to the pattern tool, which is gonna be really great for making intricate little details on this statue that take advantage of the high precision 3D printing that would be used to make this trophy. So I tried out things like lattices or just sphere cutouts, all kinds of crazy things. And well, I'm just gonna have to jump to the end because this was really intensive on my CPU, so I couldn't record at the same time. But here's what I came up with. So as you can see, I modified the base, so now instead of just being a rectangular prism, it's this really cool low poly base. And then I smoothed out this watery design so that they all blend together a little more and look really natural and corally. I didn't change too much with this part, but I really like how the edge pattern turned out with these ribbons. So it turned these into a kind of really cool engineered looking scaffold type pattern which I think fits into the whole aesthetic of the trophy really well. And yeah, so I didn't really do much more than that. I could have made it more complicated, but rather than just trying to go totally crazy, I wanted to come up with a composition that still looked good, most importantly. So I brought that back into 3D Builder, and now I'm just gonna go ahead and model in a very simple base, which I kind of imagine being made out of another material, maybe a wood. I'll paint all the different parts separate colors, and then before I save this all out, I'm gonna use the subtract command to cut away parts of the model so that all these different parts aren't overlapping anymore, but rather they come right into contact with each other. So I'll just subtract one part of the model at a time from the rest of the model, and eventually I'm left with all these parts that are just touching but not actually intersecting. Anyways, I saved all these parts out, still separate. That way I could bring them into Keyshot and do some really cool rendering and give each of the different parts a different material or color. So in Keyshot, I'll just go ahead and orient my model, and it crashed. We'll open that back up, and now we can start applying materials to each of these parts, which is really fun. I really like adding reflective materials like this glass or this gold, and I can just go ahead and test out all the different looks and color combinations until I get one that I really like. I was really happy with this combination of white and gold and transparent, so I went ahead and started rendering that out. Yeah, it takes a while, but the results are really beautiful. So here you can see my mock-up of what this trophy would look like. I could render it from all these different angles, and I even did a little bit of Photoshop work on this one to see what it might look like with the graphic on the plaque. I also rendered this animation, but after rendering all night, I only made about a fifth of a turn. But luckily this whole boomerang style animation is popular these days, so there we go. I was also able to render all kinds of different combinations of materials to see what it would look like if it was all printed in one material, or if I did some kind of different treatment. And here's some nice close-ups. I even did this diamond version, just for fun. But as you saw at the beginning of the video, I also decided to actually print this out and I wasn't able to really get it done with any of my FDM printers, but luckily I do have this PO Poly Moai. And this is an SLA printer, as you can see the laser shooting at it from the bottom through this vat of resin, and that laser cures the resin one layer at a time and builds up this very detailed model. It's really fun to watch, but it's also a rather different process from what I'm used to with my FDM printers. So after the printing is done, I'll remove it from the platform, ever so gracefully. And since this wasn't a flawless print, there were some little bits of hardened resin that I had to pick off to try to make my model as clean as possible. And then as far as the remaining steps, I didn't exactly have the setup for properly curing this. You'd want to give this a a soapy bath and then rinse it in isopropyl alcohol and then ideally put it in a UV chamber so that you can cure it with a lot of powerful ultraviolet light. I didn't have any of that so I just took this to the kitchen sink, ran it under some warm water with soap, and then my UV curing chamber is just the sun. I just left it outdoors for the day 
and yeah, it wasn't exactly enough. It's still a bit sticky, but that's what I did, and that's how we ended up here. So yeah, you guys saw the renderings. I think it looks really cool, and even just in one color, like this SLA print, I still think it looks super cool. So we'll see how I do in that competition. There's a lot of great entries, but uh, in any case, it was a fun little experiment, fun thing to play around with in VR and actually be able to make really crazy forms and not have to worry about whether it can be printed or not. It sure would be cool to see this printed out on a really nice printer, but uh, hey, we'll see. Fingers crossed. All right, that's it for today. So until next time, I'm Devin. This is Make Anything. Don't forget to stay inspired.